some of you, good morning. To others, good afternoon. Wherever you're from in the world, whatever time it is, whatever the weather is, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, as I like to say with these events, there's a lot of ways that um, you could be spending an hour of your time. Thank you so much for sharing it with the, the Association for Distance Education. Um, as as um, I'm starting things off, feel free to um, you know, put uh, put in the chat um, where where you're from, uh, what the weather's like. I'm honored, just honored that uh, we have an international audience for this discussion. So, again, we're talking today about Chat GPT, or really any um, generative artificial intelligence, and how that could uh, impact us in um, in in education. Uh, my name is Rich Frazee. I'm a member of the Association for Distance Education and Independent Learning, and I am proud to serve uh, currently as a deal social media chair, media chair, and I'm also the uh, immediate past president. Beyond my work at a deal, um, I'm an instructional designer at the University of Wisconsin-Madison's Center for Teaching, Learning, and Mentoring, and I also try to um, uh, carve out some time in my life as an online music instructor. Um, I am thrilled, thrilled to host this discussion about ChatGPT. I'm really curious to know what your questions are, um, curious to know what your thoughts are, and I am also so thrilled um, to um, have co-hosting me uh, with me this discussion um, from, from Chelsea Pinar, the Managing Director of Learning at Noodle. Chelsea, would you please share a, a little bit about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. Thanks, Rich. So firstly, lovely to see you all here today. I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Uh, so as Rich said, I am Managing Director of Learning at Noodle, which means that uh, we partner with universities as they take their degree programs online. So this is really a hot topic in many of the conversations that we're having at the moment. Um, in what feels like a past life, I was a lecturer and research supervisor at the University of uh, Cape Town, which is where I, I reside. Um, in Cape Town, South Africa, and uh, I have been in the higher education online learning space for many years now, um, including having my own company at one stage creating content for online learning. Uh, I then became the chief academic officer at Hubble Studios, which was a South African uh, company working with higher ed institutions to take learning online. And we were actually recently acquired by Noodle, and so I moved into the managing director of learning role. And I'm really looking forward to speaking with you all today. Thanks, Rich. You bet. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Now, before we get started, um, I want to do just a brief overview with um, some just some information about ChatGPT and some of the headlines. Um, it's been making a lot of headlines. So for some people, um, this might be old news. For others, I mean, it's there are people still kind of getting a sense of what this is and how it could impact what what they're doing so we have this image as we talk about chat gpt artificial intelligence in general and education so we have this picture of of three students they're they're on a college campus their weather appears nice uh, relatively nice maybe a little chilly judging by the coats but all three of them they're doing some sort of writing we have two of them are, are using uh, notebooks we have another who's uh, has has uh, their computer open and and i think that that really speaks to why this is such a hot topic in education because for however long um in education writing has been just so pivotal um to to work that's done in education for, for so long, the high school essay, the college essay, that's been one of the standard forms of assessment, one of the standards way to demonstrate um, what, um, what students have learned. If the, if the computer can do it, um, what, what role, you know, how is that gonna impact things? Um, you know, headlines that I've seen uh, on December 6th from the Atlantic, uh, uh, there was an essay of, will chat GPT kill the student essay? The very next day, there was from Slat, ChatGPT won't kill the college essay. Um, there have been all sort of productivity um, things that people have commented on. Uh, articles like the best examples of what you can do with ChatGPT, how you can use it to write cover letters or do coding or, you know, have text generated um, from a like like a pirate, uh, like in pirate speak. There have also been a lot of concerns about. Um, 
about how what what ChatGPT can do. CNN had an article a couple of days ago. AI can be racist, sexist, and creepy. What should we do about it? Um, again, AI, especially ChatGPT, it is um, feeding on text that is already on the internet. There is sadly a lot of racist and sexist stuff on the internet, and that is unfortunately um, feeding um, these large language models of using what text already exists. Um, there's concerns about um, some uh, people are worried about ChatGPT might replace their jobs. Fortune had the headline, they might be right. I think it was yesterday, it was just breaking news about um, uh, various uh, higher ups in the technological world basically saying, we don't know what this can do. How about maybe we pause AI developments for the next six months until we get a better sense of that? And one of the big problems um, also about ChatGPT is we don't know exactly how it works. There was an article that's saying we simply don't know the, de the details about how GPT is trained, what data was used, where the data comes from, or what the architecture is. So before we, we dive into some conversation, something that at least helps me think about it, I, I think of the parallels with chess. Um, so what does chess have to do with any of this? So first off, something I've been fascinated with, with the history of chess, there was um, in the 19th century, as it was becoming popular in the United States and in Europe, um, there was uh, people commenting about how this is, this is idleness, this is intellectual la laziness. Why would anyone waste their time with chess? By the time we get to the 20th century, in popular culture, especially like if watch TV shows, um, smart people play chess and they play chess to like practice and work their their uh, intellect um something i can remember um in 1996 when i was i was a, a student it made news that um chess artificial intelligence had gotten to a point where it could uh, it, it beat the world champion gary kasparov at a game of chess and it was kind of like the, for just by 1966 stand, 1996 standards, a computer can beat a, a human at chess. How is this, uh, uh, you know, possible? You know, it's a, a good human. You know, you know, like a world champion. Within ten years from there, um, artificial intelligence has gotten to the point where the the world um, uh, champions, like at, at chess, they don't stand a chance. Like they just cannot beat um, the the programs because they've gotten so good. Um, but I saw a headline within the past year about chess is booming. Chess hasn't seen popularity like this since decades. And again, I don't want to oversimplify, but it's something just to consider. Um, if chess has gotten to a point where it can beat any person in the world, but people are still playing chess. I, I use that as a little bit of encouragement um, for, for us in the world as, um, as these new tools um, become scary good at what they can do, people are still engaging in ways of thinking that these tools can still do. So that's just um, just some food for thought. Now that we've um, gone through my technical difficulties, and thank you again for your patience, along with that overview, let's open it up to some discussion. So we've gotten some great, great questions that came through. And um, the, a lot of them had a question about how can students use this? And a lot of uh, the questions was, um, how can we, uh, what concerns should we have about academic integrity? And there was one great question that came through um, uh, that kind of combines those. Um, so Chelsea, I'm gonna ask you to kind of start, start us out with this question. And uh, this question is this, how does ChatGPT work in higher education for discussions and papers? What are some red flags and how can faculty embrace this tool while still ensuring academic integrity? Chelsea, any uh, would you be so kind as to uh, lead us off in that uh, that question? Sure. I think the short answer is to be determined. <laughs> so we're we're really looking to to solve for this question at the moment as we work with university partners because uh, it's it's sort of happening whether we like it or not. So we are seeing some universities uh, placing a ban on things like ChatGPT and even more broadly AI tools. 
we're seeing other universities uh, update their, their plagiarism policies to account for things like ChatGPT. And we're seeing some universities and even at a government level, if we look at the Department for Education in the UK, actively encourage uh, that we embrace things like ChatGPT. So um, if we think about it for uh, in terms of how we sort of bake it into, if we decide we're embracing it, we're going to bake it into the way that we approach um, content discussions um, and other activities and assessments in learning, we really need to think about the ways in which it can be helpful, the ways in which it can be risky. So approach it with an appropriate sort of a uh, healthy level of caution and also equip our our students our learners to be able to use it in a in a responsible way um so i guess one of the the key ways in which we've been thinking about using chat gpt is that you know at the end of the day it's still a tool that requires human input so it requires that we give it a prompt and the way we prompt it is, is vital in terms of the, the information that we'll get from it. Um, it uses human generated content in order to uh, give us its output and ultimately it needs human interpretation. So we're thinking about how to, um, how to equip students to or train them in how to prompt appropriately chat GPT for different discussions and assessments and also then how to critically evaluate its output. Um, so that could be the, um, the topic of a discussion is the output from ChatGPT, for example, uh, and how they critically evaluate that. And really, they need to have an understanding of the, the key concepts that they're learning about in order to uh, provide an appropriate response or well thought out um, uh, prompt, sorry, for ChatGPT. They also need an understanding of the relevant schemas to be able to critically evaluate the output. So I think we're not, we're probably not at the point where ChatGPT um, is kind of doing the, doing everything for students. It's really how we think about how to leverage it um, uh, guide students and help them to use it in a responsible and appropriate way so that it can be um, it can be a mechanism for discussion and really get them uh, quite quickly if we think about Bloom's revised taxonomy get them quite quick, quickly to things like uh, critically evaluating um, on on that that level of verb so um, yeah that's the way we're thinking about it Rich. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, I have some thoughts. I do also want to encourage um, if other people have have perspectives about, you know, how higher education might um, make use of this tool with discussions, papers, or assessments. What those red flags might be, how faculty might uh, embrace it while while ensuring academic integrity. I know some models that I've seen. Um, they're they're trying to put in some sort of policies, um, which is is good. Um, they're 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 based on the honor system. So I, I've seen some examples where um, faculty encourage um, their their students. Okay, this this tool exists. AI, uh, you know, generative AI is going to be around for who knows long. Let's at least get you some experience. But um, I want you to indicate in your essay what portions of your uh, essay was you um, chat GPT generated. Um, and I want to make sure that only, let's say 25% of, um, of the, the essay max has been generated from chat GPT. Granted, that is the honor system. You know, you, you, we, yes, there, there is going to be something of an arms race because there's going to be generative AI that can, you know, make text then the turnitins of the world, um, the uh, things looking for plagiarism, they'll have their tools that they'll try to, um, uh, you know, detect it. And then the new AI model is going to come. But I, I think just that acknowledgement that those tools ex uh, exist. Um, for me, I, I think back to being, um, you know, 20 years old, and I have like a paper due the next day. Um, and it's like, I don't know where to start. And I would, I, I can put myself, uh, you know, imagine like 
using chat GPT just to kind of get started. When I had the first couple of times I, I experimented with it, it almost, um, to me, my first reaction, like this could be the end of writer's block. Like, I don't know how to get started. This is gonna get, you know, help me get started. Um, at the same point, um, I, I, I mentioned, I made that example of, I was a student and my paper was due the next day. And I hadn't, um, I hadn't started yet, and I needed to churn something out. That's not the best uh, example of of a student, you know, working on a paper. The reality, though, is that um, that's common um, for you know we humans by nature procrastinate and churn something out in the last second. And so my my thought about um, how you could at least design a writing assi a, a assignment knowing these tools exist to minimize the, shoot, I haven't started my paper. I guess ChatGPT is just gonna write it for me because it's due in six hours. You know, maybe two months before the paper is due, I wanna see your thesis statement. Um, a week after that, I wanna see five sources you found and I want you to share ways about how those sources could be relevant to your paper. The week, two weeks after that, I wanna see an outline of what you think are gonna be the key points of your paper. A week after that, give me your first paragraph and kind of scaffold the assessment um, that just kind of removes the whole um, possibility of the papers almost due and someone hasn't started so chat gpt just thinks it's a it's a, a worthwhile example um any thoughts any questions does anybody have any perspectives that that they would like to share about about that about uh the papers in in higher education in the meantime i'm just going to highlight from the chat we also need to recognize um, that whatever we feed to chat gpt further enriches its database from future generated material can be can be drawn absolutely um also that's a good reminder that um and that ties into like security or privacy whatever you put in there it's gonna put in there so whatever prompts you're putting in um be careful with any sort of intellectual property um you know anything that's private anything that's sensitive because it's it's going to be be in there. Um, he, here's an interesting question we have from Evan Smith. Um, do global people react differently than more critical ones to any any predictive text? And you know, I'll just kind of frame that about um, how people are are reacting to to text. Um, Chelsea, may I, would you be? Uh, I'll be willing to share share some thoughts about um, people just kind of how they react to uh, to text, and maybe this is a, a good way of um, looking at uh, evaluating text, um, whether it's anything we see online or anything that ChatGPT might be putting in there. Yeah, definitely, and um, I guess it's a way of uh, training people to think. I remember one of the first courses that I did as a university student was, um, it was a way of thinking uh, that it taught me more than any particular, um, you know, a uh, bit of content. And I think that's what we really need to train students in as well is to think this way, especially as this knowledge economy grows. And I think Wendy had an interesting point as well that, you know, what about things like Wikipedia or the internet? It wasn't actually that long ago that these tools became available to us too. And we need students to think critically about the information that they that they receive there as well. Ultimately, ChatGPT is scanning those resources, including Wikipedia, which we know is not the, um, you know, always the best source of truth. So um, yeah, I think in terms of the view that we have, not just on these predictive tools, but on um, information in general, we need to, we need to equip students with the skills to not be gullible, but rather to look at things critically and to apply their own mind to the information that they're that they're um, that they're exposed to and that they're finding as they search for it. Thank you, Chelsea and um, Stephanie Swartz. I, I see hand by all means. Yeah. Hi. Um, 
I've been using it um, in my business communication classes at graduate school level. Um, these are professionals who are facing the challenge of being asked to use it for internal communiques, uh, memos, emails uh, within the company and also to stakeholders outside the company. And so what I did was I had them write an internal memo on their own and then run it past chat G, uh, GPT to compare what they came up with and what uh, you know the AI generated text was, and then tell me. And these are these are uh, students who um, are in risk management, who are in um, work in like crisis. Uh, you know, when a company has to face some kind of you know crisis management compliance. Um, these are are you know the and. They have to look at whether these fulfill, um, you know, the text fulfills the, um, I don't know, there are like six uh, basic approaches to um, crisis communication within a company. And so, you know, they they looked at what they did, what um, was generated, and then talked about what the uh, the limitations were. And I found that to be, uh, you know, and then we, we come up with best practices. So what, uh, um, what kind of best practices uh, can they, um, you know, follow when they use that in a in, in their real life setting in their professional lives. Um, so it's just an idea. Well, thank you. Do you have any thoughts of best practices emerging? <laughs> We're still working on it. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, which again, I, I think we're still working on it. We're still figuring it out. That's what Chelsea had mentioned at the beginning. We do need to embrace that um, that attitude. Um, partially, and, and this is why I'm, I, I was actually reassured uh, seeing that news headline about various leaders in the tech world saying, how about we pause this generative AI, at least for like, I think that they suggested six months till we get a handle on what this is. Um, because these models are gonna be changing. It was just interesting after ChatGPT came out, it was almost this arms race, like, and I'm the major tech company and we have our thing that's gonna be coming out. And we're the major tech company, we have our things that's gonna be, gonna be coming out. And I, my, one of my biggest fears is, um, how quickly things will um, will emerge. And I, I think just coming in with a mindset that change is gonna be a constant and however we can adapt to change, um, that is going to, what's gonna make us um, su uh, successful. Um, this, uh, I have a comment from, from Wendy that caught my eye and it kind of ties in um, with a question that, that, uh, that I received ahead of time. And this question, the, the comment in, in the chat, many students write very poorly and chat GPT can teach them how to rephrase something to make better sense. Um, I, I think that's a great point about how you can use this tool for, for editing, refining. I mean, you can ask it like, how, how can I improve this text? What, how can I make it better? There was a great comment um, or a, a question that came in ahead of time and it's this, my concern is will this, being ChatGPT, not degrade academic writing? Um, so, so, so Chelsea, I'll, I'll start with you. We we have these two ideas. Uh, one about using ChatGPT as a tool to re, um, uh, refine writing. We also have uh, have this concern about if ChatGPT can generate this text, will that degrade the you know lessen the quality? or the skills in writing. Chelsea, would you be willing to kind of share your thoughts on those two, two ideas? Absolutely. Well, you know, um, this is a contentious topic because um, writing in academia has historically been something that's really important, something that we value. And typically we expect those who come out of academia to have refined that skill. Um, I guess as we think about the, the role of tools like ChatGPT in writing is, yes, on the one hand, absolutely, um, you know, just predictive text can help us um, to improve in that area. Uh, does that mean that we learn how to um, correct our grammar, how to communicate more succinctly or more clearly? 
Um, or does it mean that we never get to learn those skills because we have a tool doing it for us? I guess the question is is bigger than that. It's what does the future look like for, for us? You know, is that a useful skill for us going forward when we think about writing? Um, is it particular to certain industries? Um, and I guess more broadly, how do we think about the skills that we're equipping our learners and students with uh, in terms of the the curricula that we that we include so if we think about our our portfolios uh, as universities i i'm beginning a a program in september of this year and one of the courses is in ai for education and it made me think that we need to think um about the the particular technical skills that are important now and perhaps important or not that important for the future of work um but also more broadly how do we think about uh, equipping our learners with skills in AI and an understanding of AI that sets them up for success in their industries and in their particular careers. So I I think that could go one of two ways, Rich, uh, in terms of writing. Uh, and I think it really depends how, how much we need to hang on to that and making sure that, that students uh, learn those writing skills themselves rather than relying on chat GPT. I think that answer to that really depends on um, what they're trying, what they're aiming for. So what is the program, the industry, the career that they're, that they're working within? Yeah, no, th thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. And you kind of touched on this about, you know, the, the, the use of, um, you know, what these are being used for, the skills, um, what is going to be relevant or applicable to what they were working on. And I, one thought I've had, and it's about academic writing in, in general. It's a, I, I'm thankful to have, you know, had lots of teachers who have made me do academic writing. All, you know, I, I've had fun experimenting with chat GPT. I will say this, if, if I'm writing something that I, I care about or I'm passionate about, um, I'm not a great writer, but just because I've done so much of it, I can churn out um, something um, re related to um, something I'm interested in and a product that I'm going to be happy with um, faster than I could um, try to have ChatGPT come up with something. But again, that's if I'm writing about something that I'm interested in. If it's something like, you know, create a, a cover letter for, for a job application or or maybe summarize this big chunk of text, well, ChatGPT is going to be able to do it way quicker. Um, but I, I do think about, you know, with, with regards to academic writing, with these tools that, that are existing, I, and I, I need to preface, I think the academic paper has lots, lots of value. But with these tools that exist where you can create um, that, you know, that, that create the text for, for a potential student, it is worth thinking, why are you, you know, what, what is the real takeaway of that uh, paper? I, I will admit when I, when I was first teaching in the college classroom, the reason that I had students write papers was because my teachers had me write papers. So it was just kind of this like, well, I don't know, it's because we are supposed to do. It's uh, you're in this college course of so like, of course there's gonna be like a three to five page paper or an eight to 10 page paper is the final assessment. Um, why, why wouldn't there be anything else? Um, something that I've tried to do that, that I've enjoyed as, as an instructor in my own courses um, for, for any sort of final project, I will often give them the chance, okay, write a, a final college paper about this top, you know, a top topic you're interested in. Just because it's been, you know, they've grown for so many of them, they've grown up writing papers because that's, so that's what they're interested in doing. But I'll also offer students, that's one option. You're also welcome to create uh, like a, a, a YouTube video or like a vlog or a video essay that goes into details. Uh, maybe you're a student who's into graphic design can you create some sort of visual component that summarizing key takeaways that's important um, so that you can demonstrate what you've learned um, in something that you're passionate about? Uh, one of the coolest examples I've, I've ever heard is from a colleague um, who had a teacher let them do you know, a final project in any for format. She made a quilt. Um, she you know, worked with fabric and made this ornate quilt with these different patches with these different images and you know she had to describe why it was relevant she had to talk about it 
but it gave students a chance to um, take, you know, demonstrate what they've learned in a wide variety of things. Um, I know um, AI is becoming pretty advanced as far as making a physical quilt um, to demonstrate learning. I don't, I don't think we have to worry about that. So just some ideas. Um, I'd love to hear your your thoughts um, about academic writing, either things you've noticed, um, strategies that you're taking away, concerns that uh, that you're taking away. And and Haley, um, during that time, I'll, again, I'll give, give uh, people a chance to, you know, collect their thoughts if there's something they want to ask, something they want to share. Haley, uh, would you be willing to kind of go through the chat and um, just kind of highlight either any any takeaways or questions that are catching your eye? Yes, absolutely. All right. I am thoroughly enjoying this discussion so far. Um, in addition to our international crowd that we have here today um, from uh, Europe, South Africa, um, I'm probably leaving out a few areas there. We have uh, folks joining us from the University of Arizona Global Campus, Angelo State University, the University of South Carolina, Northwest University, Walden, um, and Troy University. So I wanted to highlight all of our colleagues there. Some chats that um, I am, uh, some messages and thoughts that I'm pulling out from the chat are different uses of the technology. Um, there's also a sentiment that I'm seeing. Um, gosh, there's a lot of messages in the chat. There's also a sentiment um, that I'm seeing is that this, this AI doesn't um, need to be scary um, and that we can learn to utilize it to further students' educational experience or our own experience. Wendy Conaway made an interesting comment about AI in progress or AI uh, working in real time, I should say. And uh, if you compare what I am saying, the, the audio to what is going across on the closed captions, it's cleaning up my speech a little bit and will leave out the ums and hesitations. Uh, so AI is, is uh, making me look better, I would say, maybe <laughs> in writing at least. Um, some comments about chess, uh, being a model for grammar to a Swiss linguist in the 1900s and um, recognizing that whatever we feed to chat GPT further enriches its database, uh, which Rich, you, you spoke to, uh, that once the content is out there, it's out there and it doesn't, it doesn't go away, it continues to metamorphosize. Let's see, um, comparisons to chat GPT um, or other AI to Wikipedia. Teresa Handy commented on how chat GPT is uh, unfortunately further evidence that racism is systemic. I say unfortunately because of the topic, but um, still a valuable tool that can help us um, eliminate those types of, of um, interactions, hopefully. Um, I'm stumbling over my words there, but. Of course, just reiterating that uh, ChatGPT can teach students to write better, help them rephrase something. Rich, I so felt uh, in my heart when you talked about the writer's block and getting over writer's block. And sometimes if we can just get a little feedback, it'll help us get on track with our writing. What else? Um, I don't want to take up too much time, so Rich, feel free to. Yeah, no, thank you for that uh, that summary. Um, no, great, great takeaways from there. Um, now, here's here's a, a question that that was also submitted uh, ahead of time. How will ChatGPT impact um, course design for online courses? Um, and I'm also the the question is from online. I, I think it's a good starting point for the question. I, I think we can ponder um, um, how um, any sort of course uh, might, uh, the design might look into that. And on a related note, you know, so much of the attention is, um, you know, a, a lot of the headlines are about students could use us to cheat, um, which, which is true. Um, 
I'm also curious, Chelsea, your perspective about not only will how, how chat GPT impact course design, but do you have any thoughts on how um, people who work um, either as instructors or course designers might use these tools? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we are we are at a point where we're thinking we're thinking critically about higher education, both in terms of online and in classroom formats. And a lot of the lessons that we can learn as we think about online course design are useful in blended and uh, in classroom modalities as well. So I think that the uses for ChatGPT. And again, I think it's coming whether we like it or not, uh, are probably going to find their ways into all forms of, of education. Um, we are, you know, we're thinking about how we use it for course design in terms of uh, research tasks that would take us a long time to think about curriculums, um, to think about breaking down learning outcomes, uh, how to speed that up by using tools like ChatGPT to be uh, to be clear we're not we're not using this in our our process is still very much um learning and instructional designers carrying this forward but we want to make sure that we're on the on the forefront of thinking about how this might help us in the future uh, and likewise course designers in all sorts of institutions around the world so thinking about how to speed up some of those research tasks but again having um making sure that we have uh, a human mind with uh, their own experiences uh, look critically at those findings and make sure that we are thinking about the um, the particular university, about the student profile we're catering for, et cetera, et cetera, all these nuances that come to come into play when we think about course design. I think, you know, what we also have to think about is if we're going to design courses and activities, assessments, content, discussions, in a way that requires students or encourages students to actually use tools like ChatGPT, um, in the way that uh, I didn't I didn't catch her name, but somebody earlier gave us a great example uh, about the communication course. So if we're encouraging students to use it to to give them those really clear instructions to think about the the broader university policies and where there might be parameters or limitations in terms of what we can expect them to do with it um, as we we build that into the design of our content. Um, and also, uh, very interestingly, Cheryl brought up, uh, you know, chat GPT detection tools. So when we do want to put those limitations in place. How do we make sure that we are we're sticking to them and that our students are sticking to them and that we can actually hold them accountable? And it's quite interesting because uh, I've done a couple of experiments uh, with those detection tools and it's not always right. So I run some some content through there that I wrote from my head. And I've been told that it was written by ChatGPT. So I'm interested to know who else has had experiences uh, experimenting either with how they've incorporated tools like ChatGPT into the design of their courses. So if we think at a sort of curriculum level or how to map out scaffold learning outcomes and assign the best activities and assessments, if we think about assessment strategies, backwards design, how do we use tools like ChatGPT to give us ideas? So similar to writer's block to give us ideas about how we work backwards in a very um, sort of intentional way there. Uh, but also if anybody has examples of how they've used uh, tools like ChatGPT uh, or detection tools and how accurate they, you found them to be. You know, it's interesting because AI actually recently completed a, a course on AI with the University of Helsinki. You can find it online. It was very interesting. Uh, and a large part of that course was just about defining AI. And it's all around us. I mean, you know, for anyone who uses tools like Spotify or Netflix, um, it's it, we're using it already. So I guess as we think about course design, I think it's um, moving forward with these tools one step at a time, trying it out, for one step in our process, testing it, seeing how it works, taking some lessons from that process, and then entering forward again. Um, so that that's certainly the approach that that I've been taking. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things that I'm seeing in the chat. Um, 
Uh, someone's used it, uh, Margaret's used it to develop a short comment on why students can't prove a hypothesis. Um, response was very adequate. Someone's commenting, uh, enter chat GPT text, something that generated into zero GPT. That's one of the detection tools. And it reckoned that it figured out like, yep, that is AI generated. And then a couple of words were changed. And all of a sudden, um, it it didn't recognize it as something that um, came about from, from chat GPT. Um, if anyone has any any exp uh, experiences, uh, feel free to uh, raise your hand um, to, or, or just, uh, yeah, to, um, you know, if you'd like to unmute and share, you're welcome to put it into the chat. Um, feel free to keep thinking, I'll, I'll just share share an example, but I love to keep making space for anybody else who would like to uh, to talk. I um, I just did an experiment. I, I asked ChatGPT um, from a design or a teaching point of view, I asked it to come up with some learning objectives for a course I taught and it generated a bunch of learning objectives. I then asked it to, um, based on those learning objectives, to um, create some lesson plans and to create some assignments that would meet some, uh, um, you know, those learning objectives. And it created stuff. I then asked it to, um, I, I gave it the essay question that it had generated um, or, or suggested. I asked it to, you know, come up with it, a, you know, create a, a, a possible essay based on that. You know, it, it aced it. I then asked it to evaluate the the essay. You know, how could it be stronger, et cetera, and it does it. Um, I, I think of, for me, one of the more boring things to come up with is multiple choice questions. That's just me personally. If you love making multiple choice questions, that's awesome. More power to you. Um, but for me, um, it, um, it came up with multiple choice questions that were connected to that. Um, so those are, those are ways that um, it could be potentially as asked to like come up with like a listening list or like you know list of examples related to to the field. Um, so those 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 are our our ideas. Um, based on that, any other would anyone either uh, um, like to kind of jump in on ways that they've had a chance to use it or um, what other questions? thoughts, concerns are, are you having about uh, chat GPT that maybe uh, Chelsea and I haven't had a chance to to talk through yet? And I've gotten pretty comfortable with the online facilitator of silence. So I'd love just to kind of make, make some space for anybody who uh, as a question or an opinion. We have lots, lots of great insights in this room. Hi, um, I, I posted a question in, in the chat. Is it okay if I just ask it? Please do, I'd love that, Cheryl. Yeah, thank you. So my, my post is, I'm completely new to chat GPT and I'm wondering, um, is it plausible that folks could actually upload peer-reviewed journals, articles, or what have you into the database? Um, yeah, that, that's kind of my question. Then, you know, secondarily to that would be, oh, excuse me, are plagiarism tools such as Turnitin or SafeAssign going to pick up on stuff like that? Excellent question. I've, um, I, I, I've seen, so Turnitin, um, as like right away when chat GPT started making headlines, they started making their headlines too, um, specifically about, um, yes, our next rounds of turn it in, uh, we are including, including AI detection tools and we want to make sure that, um, um, to, to oversimplify, um, make sure that you still have a need for us, um, to, to detect, um, you know, acad academic integrity issues, um, I haven't tested it out. I will readily admit. Um, I think Turnitin has recently released something. Anyone feel who, who knows more, feel feel free to chime in either in the chat or um, you know raising your hand. But uh, I, I do know that the the companies in the world that make make their business 
through you know assisting with academic integrity they are they are doing what they can um, to to ensure that they can track it and your your, your comment about the uploading um, journal materials is is uh, interesting I am not aware um, exactly of what's being of what the uh, open AI is the company that runs chat GPT of how they're um, exactly feeding it uh, but my I'm at least assuming that whatever you give to ChatGPT, ChatGPT is learning from. And I have seen at least um, comments about how you can use ChatGPT as a tool is to summarize. Um, and I, I know there are people who are taking um, you know, blocks of academic text and they're, um, they're, they're feeding into ChatGPT and they're asking questions like, some you know could you summarize this content for me um and so chat GT, gpt would be learning from that one power a powerful to a way of using this tool and i'm going to say of using this tool for good um is um take this content of academic information and now rephrase it so that like a high school student might be able to better understand, like summarize it at the high school level, maybe summarize this at the fifth grade level. Um, and we had a great comment that Mark just posted that I think is related to this. I'm gonna make a connection. I know there's controversy over AI using artists work to generate art over um, uh, something with similar qualities, something for faculty to think about with regards for AI using their work to generate ideas there is the cop i mean there are copyright concerns um about ai that we just don't have a full full grasp of yet um again in the visual art world um with the ai tools that came out people were saying you're you're like you just stole our intellectual property without asking to like feed your model and so yes academic prose quality literature can inform it they're at I, I'm just going to say I, I don't have the answer, but I will say that this is a very big ethical concern about AI is how they got it, how it's being used, how it's being appropriated, how it's um, how the creators of what's generating the material are or are not um, being compensated for for their work. Um, those are those are big things to to uh, to consider. Uh, yeah, I have uh, Rachel commenting. Yeah, I've used it for summary uh, summaries for uh, English language learners too. I, I think that's a great way of using it. Um, Chelsea, any any thoughts uh, on that? I too recently used it to, for summaries. Um, I'm learning Italian, and I was a good student. I attended all of my lectures, all the workshops. Um, I completed my homework every week. And when it came to studying for the exam, because we have an exam every three weeks, I um, I just couldn't bear to look at the same recordings and the same content and the same textbook pages again. And so I asked ChatGPT a few key questions to help me revise um, certain prepositions and how to use different words and um, to summarize vocabulary for going shopping. And I found it really useful in that way because it... it um, it packaged that content in a new way, which was helpful because we know that repetition, so receiving the same content in different ways and that kind of repetition helps knowledge stick. So uh, I found that really useful. And I'm thinking as we're talking about copyright issues and um, plagiarism and you know how prepared we really are to pick this kind of thing up, that it's probably going to be most important for us to use tools like ChatGPT as a tool for learning, but to make sure that we're still um, encouraging, enabling, designing our courses, our assessments, our activities in a way that uh, our learners need to create their own, um, their own, they need to form their own opinions, they need to communicate in their own way that might not be written, you know, uh, but they need to communicate in their own way the opinions and uh, perspectives uh, that they've formed, uh, even if they've used tools like ChatGPT in the process of getting there. So uh, 
that's interesting. I also think as we're talking about uh, translation, that it might be, uh, you know, looking looking back on this conversation in five years time, what are some of the benefits we will have seen from ChatGPT? I'm interested to see what it does for us in terms of accessibility uh, and how it helps us uh, in certain ways to like, for example, with translation to make education more accessible uh, if we <laughs> leverage it in the right way um, and, and in a responsible way. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Thank you, Chelsea. If I, if I may share a memory. Um, so again, this is the, 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 the big overarching theme is here's this new tool. It does lots of stuff that is very different and could append lots of things. This is new. This is different. I'm reminded of when I when I was first my, my first uh, year teaching at the college level. And this this was different. You know, it, it's not the same scope. But I can remember when I was uh, first teaching, um, the big new technology was was texting. People texting on their phones, and everyone teaching in in the college level is all. Uh, kids these days just texting on their phones during class and, and students should not be texting in class. Like I, I do need to, to, to comment on that, but the, um, it was very much like the, the great new evil threatening, threatening uh, teaching as we know it was with students texting in class. And I can remember, uh, I, I, I didn't um, um, call students on it very often. Um, and most of them were, were good about, you know, doing what they needed to do. But I, I do remember one time um, talking to a student who I, I'd seen during my lecture, she kept looking under her desk and doing this, and, and she kept doing it. And I thought, like, well, okay, this is this is getting distracting to me. I'm going to talk to the student after class. Um, and so I, I talked to her, like, yeah, you know, just, you know, if you would please in the future, um, I, I saw you were texting a lot. Please in the future, please don't text me during my lecture. Um, the student, um, English was her second language. She wasn't goofing off on her texting. She was using her translating app to take what I was saying and input it into her app so that she could better understand it. So naturally, I, I felt like terrible. Oh, uh, like the the one time I I, I called out a student, um, but I, it 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 does underscore again there there are concerns about these new tools, um, and I I do think that we need to be calling out these concerns as they come up um, about the um, racism and sexism that's built into a lot of what they're learning from about um, copyright information or infringement. At the same point, we do need to recognize the good that these tools can do when it comes to accessibility or um, helping people understand information or I, I think from translating. Um, yeah, um, we have just a little time left um, from Cheryl just posted. I wonder if using chat GPT influences critical thinking. Chelsea, in our, in our time left here, do you mind just kind of offering just a couple of thoughts on that? I mean, I wonder too. I think it's going to be really exciting as we see uh, academic research come out with some uh, sort of more informed answers to some of these questions. Uh, and and now is the opportunity. I think, you know, AI has been around for a long time. It's really under the spotlight right now. So I'm interested to see, uh, you know, as, as higher education starts to embrace it in one way or another, how we start to formulate research, research questions around these things and collect real meaningful data so that we can um, we can make informed decisions going forward. And I think that's a really, that's a really interesting question, uh, Cheryl. Um, and yes, maybe it will help us uh, achieve those sort of um, some higher, higher order thinking like critical thinking more quickly or in different ways than what we've done in the past. And it will be really interesting to see that, especially as we see not just uh, research take place, but also uh, how more and more people, and we've heard some examples here today, how more and more educators are uh, exploring the use of AI in 
sometimes small ways, but that allows us to learn from that and realize what those um, those opportunities are for developing uh, different skills and, and ways of thinking. So yeah, I would I would be really interested to to see what this conversation we're having if we all got together again in uh, what is twenty twenty eight. What would we be saying about uh, the benefits and dangers that have come with with AI and tools like ChatGPT? Thank you so much, Chelsea. I knew the hour was going to fly by. Um, it flew by. I gotta sadly, I don't know that we could. I mean, we could be talking about this for a long, long time. Um, but thank you so much. Um, um, yeah, we have some information. So first off, I just want to say thank you so much to Chelsea um, Pinar for uh, joining us on the um, as, as part of this conversation. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Adil. Thank you, um, uh, Haley, for hosting this. I'll talk to you about Adil in just a second. Chelsea, um, if people want to support your work or follow your work, or is there anything uh, about you that you're up to that you'd like to share with us before I, I, I chat a deal? Sure, I will post my LinkedIn uh, link in the chat if anyone wants to follow, um, and I will continue to share updates about uh, how I see uh, ChatGPT and AI in general uh, playing a role in education going forward as I continue my own education and also continue to partner with universities who are thinking about these things. Thank you so much, Chelsea. I really appreciate you sharing your, your wealth of knowledge and insights. It's been just wonderful full chatting with you. And um, if I could also just take a moment just to hype a deal. Haley, if we could have that slide back. So again, thank you so much um, for, for joining this event of the Association for Distance Education and Independent Learning. Um, we have a website. If you want to become a member, by all means, we um, whether you're active, whether this is your full-time role working with distance education and independent learning, whether you're just someone who's just interested in it, um, you are welcome. Your insights are welcome. We want to learn from you and we want to be a benefit to you. So um, I have greatly benefited just professionally as a member of a deal. Um, we will, uh, in a couple within two weeks, um, have uh, this chat posted on the YouTube, um, the, the Adeal YouTube page. So um something to to look forward to and i'm also just going to put uh, my my email chat if you have any questions about a deal wondering how you can be involved wondering how um a deal might be of value to you send me an email jrfrazy at wisc.edu i would love to tell you more about um about a deal and i'm also going to share um two um resources that i have that uh, come from the university of wisconsin madison that might be helpful um, to, to you as you learned how to navigate um, chat GPT. Um, the first, I'm gonna make sure to have these guys. The first one comes from UW's uh, Madison's library. This is a student facing guide, uh, giving students consideration about how they uh, might use chat GPT. And then the next one is a faculty facing guide. I'm putting it in the chat right now. This one, um, comes from UW Madison's um, uh, uh, College of Letters and Science. It's a humanities. Lots of um, you know humanities departments that uh, utilize uh, writing on a very regular basis. So just some some considerations on that. Well, thank you again um, so much. There's a lot of ways you could spend your Thursday morning, afternoon, evening, wherever it is from your your part of the world. Thank you so much for um, spending your hour with us at a deal today. Uh, really, really value the conversation. <laughs>